Good morning, coaches. This is your wake up call. I'm Sandy Bluadonna. Today is Big Monday, August 1st. You do know the term wake up call is a relative term because many of you have been awake for a long time. In fact, you even did that 6 a.m. East Coast body workout. Yeah, that's about 3 a.m. for me, which is just about the time the last thing starts kicking in for me. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the new early hours uh, for you. And um, today is really a wake up call. And that is if you are new to coaching and you're looking for something to really uh, gain some traction in your new business, uh, this is the place. This is where we tell you what is going on and what you can take advantage of. And it's also a place for new, uh, for existing coaches to reignite uh, their coaching business if things have kind of fizzled out. It's it's August. I cannot believe it is August. For many of you, it is back to school month. And no, that's just not right. But for Beachbody, it's a very big week. So I want you to stick around. Keyshawn has a ton of announcements. Lots of momentum is building. And for right now, I'd like to move it over to Darren Ashby with recognition for the week. Good morning, Sandy. How are you? I'm doing great. Good morning to you. You have some uh, names to announce. I do. I do. Out of the way. Let's get to it. Good morning, coaches. It's Big Monday. And here's some big recognition, starting with our new Diamond Coaches this week. And we have 16 new Diamond Coaches. That's fantastic. So congratulations to Corey Ball, Nikki Bunting, Lindsey Calvin, Jonathan Cassins, Jordan Clavery, Madison De Franceschi, um, Maricoca Guy, Camille Huard, Nora Catherine Lindsay, Chris, uh, let's see, Christy Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff, Christy Kirchhoff, Stephanie Kors, Patricia LeMay, Maria Olivier, Eve Parsons, Alexa Cho, and Whitney Thomas. Those were your 16 new Diamond Coaches. And that's all we had this week. Diamond coaches, new diamond coaches. We did have a bunch of emerald coaches, like 86 new emerald coaches, I believe. But anyway, congratulations to these new diamond coaches. And if you know one of them, reach out to them today and congratulate them. That would be really cool. And to keep this big Monday going, let's get a big name on here. Keyshawn Graves, you around? I'm here, Darren. What's up? Happy How's Monday. How's it going? <laughs> Thank you for everything you do, Darren. And congrats to those diamonds and those 80 plus something emeralds. That means that you guys are really starting to take off in your business. And we look forward to recognizing you here on the wake up call. I heard that it is big Monday today, y'all. And I have five announcements. I'm going to try to make them as quick as possible. The first announcement is all about lift more the vip early access is available starting tomorrow that is august 2nd a tuesday the faq is faq 3317 and you already know what Lift More is about because you've gone into the back office, you looked at the product toolkit, you've gone to the champions page. Guide 20 has some of the trainings that we did during our takeover week. If you want, though, to learn more about how you can earn your very own autograph bench, I want you to go to FAQ 7477. How cool is that? Also, Joel's exclusive bod group starts today. So if you purchased a lift more pack from the 19th of July through the 27th of July, you should have received an email invite on Friday, the 29th. So make sure that you go, you check your spam if you haven't gotten it and you get involved and you get ready to go all in with the program and all in with that bod group so that you can take it back to your bod group. That's participation marketing. Take what we learn and help more people learn from us and from Joel, the creator of the in incredible program. The second announcement, maybe Lift More isn't for you. Maybe you got people who they're like, Lift More isn't for them. Well, guess what? You can get someone started with a total solution pack at $20 off with your personalized promo code. So that's any total solution pack that's $149 or above. You can share your personalized promo code with them so that they can get that $20 off. 
I think that these codes are perfect for helping someone get back on track. Maybe you have people whose BOD, Beachbody On Demand, is about to renew. You can send them the code, help them get restarted with the pack, maybe lift more, maybe something else, uh, maybe job one, maybe fire and flow. We have so many incredible programs that they can get started with and that you can use this personalized promo code with. You can also send this to maybe people who had a price objection. Maybe they have been on the fence. Maybe this is a special incentive for your network of people that you know and real life or maybe for your followers to get started with some sense of urgency. Let's get them going ASAPly. <laughs> I made that word up. But the key is FAQ 8423 has all the details for you to know. We're going to be sending an email out with your personal uh, promo code. Good grief. Say that five times fast uh, later on today. So be looking for that email. The third announcement that I have, we got to keep the team up, dream up theme going from Summit. And we want you to dream or dream big during our August Team Cup. Today is day one of our August Team Cup. The FAQ is 11051. I know that you already know that. But of course, things are just better when we dream or we dream bigger together. So you'll spend the next 31 days. So you'll spend the entire month of August supporting each other as you tap into the business tactics that work, as you motivate each other, as you use the tips from the uh, captain's guide that we sent out and you do things together. You do things maybe you wouldn't do typically. You push the excuses to the side and you just really lean on each other, your team of five, but also your bigger team to see the goals that you set this month and the strategy that you'll implement in order to reach those goals to help you really do them and lean into the work that it takes to do them every single day. Uh, you can keep up with the competition all month long via teambeachbodycup.com. That's where we'll keep a running tally of the people who have earned certain tiers. And just so you know, the tier prizes are also listed on that teambeachbodycup.com website. Go there, y'all. I know that you probably already have been there because that's where you had to go to register. But if you didn't know, one of our prizes, the first tier prize is some intimate time with Brandon Bruchard. Who listened to Brandon? I mean, if you were at Summit, you heard him. If you were listening, we streamed him. So did you hear from Brandon? He was incredible. Did you know that Forbes has rated him the top personal development coach in the world, y'all? So leaning on to this first tier prize so that you can get that intimate time with Brandon Bruchard to not only help your, your, your business grow, but to help you grow and develop as a person, <laughs> to take it back to your people, to your team, to your community, to your family. And then the second tier prize, which I love, love, love also is money, bonus points, bonus points, which translates into money. So go look at the prizes, teambeachbodycup.com, list out all of the tier prizes, come together, dream big dream together team up dream up and go earn those tiered prizes the fourth announcement that i have is all about the body block we're leveling up on this big monday so we have lift more boom you have that option we have all total solution packs 149 dollars or more with 20 dollars off that with that personalized promo code but if those programs aren't conducive aren't your thing or aren't your people's thing that you're trying to help get started guess what we can help them level up with the body block beach body on demand interactive the next 21 day challenge starts today it starts the first monday of every single month the faq actually is not listed but it's faq seven nine five Eight. We want you to lean in to Beachbody On Demand Interactive and crush your goals for 21 days straight. And guess what? When you do that, you get to enter your name into the um, to win your free T-shirt with our Beachbody Challenge and then also to submit your results through our Beachbody Challenge to potentially win that one hundred thousand dollar grand prize. And then also, as Sandy mentioned earlier, we started our new early live class times on body. So we wanted to make sure that you got your day started right, regardless of what part of the country you live in. So we started today, it was day one with a 6 a.m. That's 3 a.m. my time, that's 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Did y'all see Carl on? Did you guys see Carl? He was in that class today at 3 a.m. my time, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. He's getting ready for his tour de Ponce that starts in September. So I'm sure we're going to be seeing much more of him. The final announcement that I have for you 
is about our super weekend. We want to keep this energy going, this team up, dream up mentality going, this ability to connect and touch people in real life going. So super weekend is happening in just a couple weeks, August 12th through the 14th, the FAQ is 9792. There is a map linked in that FAQ that helps you find uh, um, events near you and just come together. It's a great way to touch and, and connect, but it's also a great way to learn from each other and hear results, hear tips from people who live near you. I'm excited. I'm going to be up in the DC area with my girl Jericho. So if you are near the DMV, I would love to see you at the DC event. Go to tbbcoa.ch. Can you drop that in there, uh, Sandy, so that we can give them this is also in the FAQ, so you'll go there. But we want you to go to this event map. Go there so that you can register for any event near you. But if you're in that DMV, I want to see you there in D.C. Okay, this is how I'm going to end this call today I, I, with a little story. I got to share a story because I've missed y'all. It's been a couple weeks since I've been here. In 2019, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. It's the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. And I spent six days as a solo traveler doing one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I was walking poly poly, which means very, very slowly in Swahili. And basically we were like walking one mile per hour. And I don't know if you've ever walked one mile per hour, but that is hard. I'm a collegiate cross country runner. And so walking that slow was so, so hard. We were walking in wind tunnels. We were walking in different terrain. We were walking under the direct sun. We were walking up. The altitude was crazy. It quite literally took me out that altitude did. And the summit night, woo, the summit night, it was so cold. We started very, very, very late at night. We were doing these switchbacks in it felt like the moon, like the crater. We would walk up two steps. We slide down one step. Everything froze. My hands, my toes, my water froze. My phone froze. I had on so many hot hands, so many layers, and it still froze, but I made it to the top. And this is what I want to take away. One of the key reasons why I made it to the top was my team. You see, you cannot, even as a solo traveler, as a solo climber, you cannot climb to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro without a team. And so I hired a team of six people, six strangers. We all met on that first day of beginning to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And it was my team that got me to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. It was my team that got me through the wind tunnels, that got me through the different terrain, that picked me up when my legs felt like concrete jello when I could not lift them. It was my team that helped me ski down that mountain after the altitude literally almost took me out. And I came back down and I recognized and I realized from talking to other teams there that it was their team that also got them to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. You cannot climb Mount Kilimanjaro alone. So what is your mountain this month? What is your Kilimanjaro? Use cup month as a starting point for you or as a restarting point for you or as a reminder to keep going and to reach other people and help them climb their Kilimanjaro too. Use team cup to dream big and relentlessly work the strategy for you to reach the top of your mountain, the top of your goals. That's the essence of participation mark marketing. That's the essence of what we do, y'all. So the challenge this week, the challenge this month is to lean in on Cup Month, to lean in on your team and get to the top of your mountain. That is all I have. Sandy, where are you at, girl? <laughs> That was awesome. Thank you so much, Keyshawn. It's good to have you back. Thank you. Um, I want to bring on our next speaker. You know, 2015 must have been a really great year to become a coach because the last few weeks, uh, the coaches I have featured have been around seven years. Maybe that is that uh, that sweet spot that you really, really hit your stride. I mean, I know that around three years is a sweet spot, but seven years seems to be like you're you're a pro at this. And um, we talked about a topic for her and 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 she's going to bring that up to you. But let me just say that she's a two time elite coach. She's also a five star diamond coach. She has achieved success club 79 months in a row. Her team name is Fit to be Free. And she is from Point Pleasant, New Jersey. You guys give it up for Megan Mosakowski. Woohoo! Woohoo! Oh, okay. I'm bringing you're bringing her in. All right, Keyshawn. Megan, how are you? 
I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. I'm so excited for you. And I believe that you were up for that Eastern, uh, well, you are on the East Coast. So and that wasn't a big deal for you to do a 6 a.m. workout, right? No, I'm always up early. <laughs> cool. And you also are starting Team Cup today and you have a team. Yes, we and do. your team name is? Fit to be free. I'm not creative or clever, but we're, we're sticking with the team name here. That's okay. It seems to work for you. So uh, <laughs> seven years almost, right, as a coach. Uh, why don't you share your journey as a coach and then share a little bit about what you've been doing in the last couple of years? Of course. So hi, you guys. Um, my journey with Beachbody started in 2014 without me even knowing what Beachbody was. Um, I was working full time as a registered nurse and I was engaged trying to get in shape for my wedding. I kind of had this idea that these photos were going to live with me and my family forever. And like that was the thing that really motivated me to take it seriously, to get healthy. I was so inconsistent. I couldn't stick with anything. And I had a gym membership and I was maybe going once a week here and there. And it really wasn't until I met my now coach, Michael Omen at my gym, he was teaching insanity classes. And that was like the one class that just did it for me. It was the class. It was how hard it was, the intensity of it. And the way that he taught was different than anything that I had ever experienced before. So when that program max 30 was launching, he told me that I should do it. So I did what any good challenger does. I went home, I told my husband that I wanted it and he bought it on Amazon. So that was my beginning. He still treated me like I was one of his own. And within those two months of me doing that program, it was the first and only thing that I had ever been able to stick with. I lost maybe 12 pounds. My seamstress was getting all mad because she had to take my wedding dress in, but I was hooked. Like that was it. And it was just forever forward from that moment. So that was December. So February came around and that was when 21 Day Fix Extreme was launching. So this time the invite was a little bit more direct and specific, but he simply told me, you need to do this program. You need to try Shakeology. You should really be a coach because you'd be great at it. So with that same impulsivity that I had, I went home and I just did that. I just went on my computer, went to the website, typed his name in, and I joined. So invites being a little bit more direct seemed to help. But through that was what I really kind of got the interest to coach in the sense that I wanted to just check things out. I didn't want to actually do it because I didn't think that I needed it. And I really didn't know anything about it, but he put me in his team page. And that was really the game changer for me because I was able to see other people on the team that were sharing how happy they were, but all of the things that they were doing, all of the things that they were accomplishing, whether it was as small as a pedicure or as big as paying off debt, but I saw another nurse that was similar in age to me that had paid off a significant amount of student loan debt with her work and effort here. And I was like, if she can do that, then surely I could do something, right? So 10 months had gone by of me just being the ultimate creep on Facebook. And I had asked him, you know, what do I do? How do I get started? And it really was an easy transition because I was already like the ultimate product of the product, right? Like I was showing up, doing my fitness program. I was obsessed with Shakeology. And I was actually just coincidentally sharing here and there on social media. But when he um, just kind of gave me that simple direction on how to get started, it was very seamless getting into coaching, which I'll go into in a little bit. But, um, you know, I had never had a desire to leave my career in nursing. Coaching was just something that maybe would be fun to do as a hobby. But through just getting started every year, I was able to decrease my employment. And if you're in healthcare, you know, the terms like full time, part time per diem, I was able to decrease pretty much every year moving forward. But it wasn't until two years ago when the pandemic hit and I was working per diem as a nurse that. I was pregnant. I think I was about 15 weeks pregnant with my daughter and I felt uncomfortable going to work. I felt scared. And I went from never having the intent to leaving the profession to wanting to leave and coaching gave me the empowerment to do so. And I was able to resign, walk away. And I've, I've never looked back. This is what I do full time now. And I'm, I just feel so blessed that I have this in my life. I love that. 
story because we're uh, we want to start featuring people who are still even working their their full time job and coaching. You know, people don't want to leave a, a job that they've worked really hard for. But things kind of changed. Your priorities changed. Coaching was speaking to you more. You were able to help people on on the front end or back end more than you could as a nurse. I hear that a lot. Um, so thank you for everything that you've done as an RN. Um, take us like a couple years ago, like what, what's been going on in the last year or two in your business since you kind of decreased your hours and are you no longer nursing or you just decreased your hours? I haven't worked as a registered nurse since the pandemic started. That was kind of the fine line for me to separate. Um, but truly like my activities and my effort with coaching haven't changed. They've been full throttle for probably the past six years. If I'm being honest, obviously I'm always constantly trying to improve. I'm always trying to tweak things and really always be a student, but it's really transitioned from how do I advance and succeed myself to how do I help my coaches and my new coaches find that same success on whatever terms that looks like for them. That's, that's awesome. So um, now you and I talked about how your business started with an invite, mm -hmm. right? And so why don't you, the, the topic about conversations that lead to invitations is one I've done before, but improving those conversations. Everybody is working on, on inviting, right? Um, but there's always an opportunity to improve your connections with people so that it leads into the invitation that helps people connect with our programs. So talk about how personal this topic was to you. Yeah, very personal. And you guys, I want you to know that inviting has certainly gotten a bad rap, right? It's something that many coaches fear or avoid. I know that I was one of them and I see it so much in my new coaches and I think it's because we've all been on the receiving end, even now, like I'm still on the receiving end of them sometimes of an invite being bad or scripted where you're left feeling either offended, gross or intruded upon. So it's my goal to help my new coaches overcome that fear of inviting. And perhaps I can adjust your perspective a little bit and help you improve your approach of inviting. And maybe it could be something that you don't necessarily avoid. So I have to be completely honest. I have never been afraid of inviting and it's never been something that I've struggled with. Why? I've had a great employee mindset when I started. I know in our industry, we're constantly hearing the word CEO and CEO mindset, but I attribute my success to being a really good employee when I started. I simply understood the assignment and I got to work regardless of whether I liked each and every one of those vital behaviors. I recently asked many of my star diamonds and success club all-stars on my team. And that same response was echoed that they knew the assignment too. So when I had asked my coach, how do I start when I was beginning my coaching career, I was already committed to being a product of the product. And that initial invite advice was simple. It was the vital behaviors, connect, invite, share, do your personal development, help other people get results. Was I excited to invite? Of course not. I was certainly very uncomfortable and I did care about what other people thought, but I knew that in order to be successful, it was something that I just had to do and I couldn't compensate for it elsewhere. For example, in high school, if my track coach said for warm up today, you're going to go run a mile. Would I have said, no, thank you, but I'm going to run over three times the amount of hurdles instead. No, that would be silly, right? So consider that business activity tracker as your coach or your boss until you master the basics in your own way and put your own spin on them, which includes inviting. If you want to build a thriving team and cultivate leaders of your own, you have to master these basics first. It's really only after this mastery that you can begin to think and behave and lead like a CEO. So you might be wondering why I've never been afraid of inviting when it's something that so many of us fear. As I mentioned earlier, as a critical care nurse, you can imagine I've been on the receiving end of numerous bad outcomes, experiences, conversations that have been so difficult. And the common thing and the hardest part of that role even was just knowing that so many of those unfortunate circumstances could have been prevented if people just took better care of themselves. 
So I'm truly thinking like, it's not about me. It's about them, right? I'm not thinking about myself or how their reaction is going to make me feel. It's not about me at all. I'm truly thinking about how my invite could impact a person's health, their well-being, their future, their family, even if they say yes, one day, I consider it an absolute blessing that I get to invite people to wellness from the comfort of wherever I decide to be, as opposed to treating illness within the confines of a hospital. So I've never been afraid to invite. I truly am afraid of what will happen if I don't. And I promise you, my invites have not been perfect this whole time. I, I started just like any of you, and I try to you know teach my new coaches or tell my new coaches that that even sometimes I'll I'll have a conversation with someone now, and my old invite will kind of resurface, and I'm just like, oh. But we all have to start somewhere, right? Whether it's your posts, your invites, your conversations, like we're all going to have those moments where we're just like, what was I thinking? But you have to start somewhere. And that's truly how you can get to improve. So I'm going to give you some tips and things that have helped me improve my invitations and things that I'm always teaching my team so that I can help my new coaches find a comfort with inviting to. So Number one, you have to believe in what you're inviting to. And you technically don't even have to have completed a program to do this. As long as you understand the mission, you've got this. You have to think, what is the purpose, the hope in, or dream in regard to the lifestyle that you want for yourself or that you want for other people? How has this or how will it improve your quality of life? And how will that impact all of the people in your life that you love, like your spouse or your children? When you truly believe in what you are inviting to, you're not going to feel fearful or icky about that. You're going to want to like shake people because that's how much you believe that they should know about this too. For me, I am always talking about how this lifestyle and our programs and products have helped me mentally. I know and we know that all of these programs help us get results physically, right? Like that that's a given. But for me, like I don't know that I ever could have fathomed how hard being a parent would be, especially with toddlers, but because of the habits and the discipline and the friendships and support that I've created and had over the years, I have the energy and the focus and the support that helps me be a better mom and person today. And that is attractive. Number two, share your heart loudly and energetically. People are always going to care more about why you are doing something as opposed to what you were doing. So as you're planting your seeds or invites, know that most people are either not going to respond or say, no, thank you. That's an expectation and that's okay. It's through your voice moving forward, whether publicly in your stories or on social media or privately in a message through your connections that are going to compel people to join you when they watch you stick through your commitment, which is why you always have to keep going. I want people to see me alert and happy and enthusiastic about this. It's not the time to tiptoe, be timid, or just document the days as they go by. I want you guys to think of your invite and the way that you show up as your only audition. For example, it's the difference between either typing on a story or sending a message that says, if you want to do this with me, you can, but if not, that's okay too, right? Or I am obsessed with this program. I feel like I could conquer the world every single time that I could do this workout. These workouts have been amazing. What is your email address? I need to send you this sample too, right? Like that's so much better. So when you speak with more inflection and passion and authority, that's always going to be so much more moving than just passively typing what you think needs to be said. Number three, ditch the scripts. Ditch them, leave them behind. All the Hey Girl stuff, anything that's copy and paste, I don't want you guys looking for, and I certainly don't want my new coaches looking for something that they can just simply use because it has to come from you. Um, I like to treat people the way that I want to be treated if I were going to be on the receiving end of some kind of a proposal or invitation. So for me, I always try to keep it real, keep it short, and keep it to the point. It's not my job to get a yes. That's never my goal when I'm sending out my invitations. It's not to convince anyone, anybody to do anything either. It's simply my job to let someone know that I'm here. I can help them. I want to help them. And they are welcome to join me. 
So for example, if someone is engaging with my content online, I'm simply messaging them back. You should do this with me. If someone is watching my stories, I'm asking them, have you ever thought of doing this with me? And if it's a customer and they're killing it, I'm asking them, have you ever thought of doing what I do as a coach? I think you would be great at it. It can be that simple. And if it's not something that you would say to your neighbor or a friend in person, it probably sounds like an invite. And I really want my new coaches to think I want to sound like a human when I'm communicating with people. Number four, use social media to remind your audience of what they can say yes to and why. When I first started as a coach, posting my workouts was the easy part, but I was getting a lot of objections about everything else, right? Like people only wanted to do the workout. So I learned very quickly that the more I shared all aspects of what I do, nutrition, fitness, support, and coaching, that those that I was inviting were more likely to be open to at least three quarters of those components. For example, I'm always trying to share at least one of my products in my stories daily. So lately it's been first thing. And I might not even be talking about first thing when I'm making it or when it's in my stories, but it's there. When my kids come home from camp, I'm often showing my two toddlers cheersing each other with their daily sunshine. I don't have to tell people what it is, but that type of curiosity often leads to people and the people that I've built trust with asking me, what is that? Is that new? What do you drink that for? What, what is that that your kids have? So that's very easy for me, especially lately when I'm helping people get set up with their Lift More Total Solution Pack that we're adding on those products to meet the, need, meet, meet the needs of their problems. And another example, I like to show screen shares of my groups. So I'll do this in my stories. So I'll do maybe like a 15 or 30 second um, share of me just scrolling through and previewing through some of the content. So this is going to show my audience that there are committed members, engagement, resources, and results in a community that they can plug into for accountability and success. And lastly, I'm always trying to show different areas of bod and body on the regular. So whether I'm sharing a body ride with Jared, a recipe that I'm making from the mindset menu, or maybe doing a quarterly refresher on four week up protocol, I want my audience to see that there is so much more to what we do beyond the specific program that I am or will be committing to. I love helping my coaches improve their perspective around inviting because it doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be complicated or even done one way. You don't have to view inviting as, okay, I need to sit down and send the same message to a hundred people. You truly are inviting. Like for me, I'm inviting all day, every day through my posts, through my stories, through my conversations. It doesn't have to be one noted. A simple invite was the catalyst to changing my entire life. Like just him saying, you should do this too. You would be great at it. I've touched thousands of people because of that one invite and becoming a coach. Because I was invited, I'm healthier than I've ever been. I've been blessed with unforgettable experiences and friendships. And it's given me more time, which is everything to me with my family and those that I care about most. Each and every one of you has the ability to give that gift to someone else just by putting it out there. So don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it. It's just an invite. I love that you said that. It is just an invite. And I think that everybody kind of puts so much pressure on themselves that it has to be the invite. Um, uh, you know, Facebook is lit up when you said that you were you left your nursing job. A lot of nurses came out and said, yay. <laughs> and somebody asked, I think it was Pamela, um, did you have to learn anything new? You know, that time that you left nursing to then go full speed ahead with coaching. You said that you didn't have a fear in inviting. Did that just come naturally because you were working with people so much and your conversations were e came easy to you or or did you have to flex some different muscles to coaching when you left nursing? So I was able to leave nursing in year three. Um, it was only that I decided to leave and I guess year six because of the pandemic. So I was able to leave way before then. It's just that I, I didn't want to until the world changed, until I changed. So I wouldn't say that I had to ramp up the way that I was working. I think the way that I was working allowed me to be able to make that decision when things presented themselves the way that they did. 
But I do attribute a lot of my life experiences to just having a different perspective about inviting as it's not about me, it's about people because we're not, we're not salesmen, we're not, we're not selling products. I mean, I know that we have products here, but the whole mission and belief around what we do is helping people. And I know how, how much better I felt and how much healthier this made me that I felt like even with all of the experience and all of the um, time that I had spent as a critical care nurse, that this was allowing me to reach more people and help them in a completely different way that was so much more enjoyable. So um, I would think perspective is definitely the bigger thing here. You know, I think there's growing pains with coaching. I know there's growing pains. And I often say that three years is a sweet spot. And now here you are almost seven years. But newer coaches really struggle with their friends ghosting them. Um, it's it's the the desperation approach of I have to sell, a, you know, a total solution pack that feels icky, you know, and we need to re-educate. We need to show people that it is not icky. It's a noble yeah. thing to do to help people get healthy, fit, happy. You want to say something about that? Yeah, I, I can resonate with that so much. I'm an only child. My husband's an only child. We really don't have a big family and we didn't have a big circle of friends. So I think from early on, it wasn't about how do I get my family and friends to do this? It was like as if I had opened a brick and mortar business, like I have to go find people, I have to go put myself out there. And I think that certainly gave me an advantage. It might have taken me longer, it might have required a little bit more work and patience, but that set me up for success long term as a coach because I wasn't just chasing a goal and finding people to plug in. And again, I just put myself out there and through doing all of those vital, vital behaviors at the same time, consistently over time, that's certainly what led to my consistent success as a coach. That's a really good point. And I, I think that friends and family are going to support you when you feel a belief and a passion about what you're doing. You know, if, if it's just to try to make a point or make a dollar or whatever, it's, it's not going to resonate with them that that authenticity, that this is something really important to you. Um, so when we're done with this call, why don't you go over to that team beach body coach 411 page? There's some great compliments. There's some questions. You can go over there and answer. Um, everybody's cheering you on. Um, Megan, my final question, what's your superpower? <laughs> my team is not going to be surprised by this at all, but for me, it's a commitment to personal growth and development. It's hard to just pick one book because um, there's been so many. I have a stack right next to my desk that I just can't pick one. But my first personal development book was actually because of my first summit. I was either a new diamond or new one star. I don't remember, but Darren Hardy was on stage. It was that keynote. And I was like, all right, I, I guess I should be doing this. So I got the compound effect. That was my first book. And if you don't have something yet, if you haven't done something yet, I want you to commit to that or find something that um, will certainly help you improve anything that's going to help you move the needle forward in your business. And it's not necessarily having that goal of like, I need to finish this book. It's that I need to make this a habit the same way that I make my, my fitness program a habit or the way that you eat or drink your Shakeology. So it's really making that enlightenment and implementation of personal development a part of your daily practice for sure. You are the best. You are done. And I'm so, so pleased because I feel like uh, what you said today really resonated because so many leaders that I see that are on uh, the Facebook page that are agreeing with you, it's like, yup, this is what I say. This is what I always say. It's like people need to hear it again from someone else. That is how I'm raising my kids. Other people are telling them what to do so they don't feel nagged. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great message. Appreciate you coming on the wake up call and tackling this topic. Stick around after the call and I will take you out of the call. So if you are, uh, if you have been listening and you want to tag your coaches to come back and listen to the replay, I think this was a great call. We also have a lot going on. We've kicked off a lot. Today is like a huge start day for people. 
I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. In fact, I want you to talk to your new coaches and say, look, a lot is going on. Let's get you centered, focused on what you can believe in, what you can be passionate about, what you can build your story on, what you can build your journey on. Everything else is, is just fun activities to keep people motivated and keep the momentum going um, as, as our network keeps growing and keeps plugging into different ways to connect people to our products and our community. So again, a lot is going on, a lot is going on, but work with your newer coaches on the one thing that's standing in their way of creating a, a, a successful business for themselves. That is my uh, closing for today. I want you to have a great week and we'll see you here next week. Bye-bye.